After living in Paris and New York City, she has settled in Vancouver and founded the Vancouver Observer, an online mag news magazine that re was recognized last month with a win and three nominations at the Online Publishing Awards in Toronto. This past summer, she took a 16-year-old journalist with no experience but far too many ideas, and she has been supportive, critical, and a wonderful, a wonderful source of guidance for a young journalist finding his footing in a cutthroat business. I am honored today to welcome to the podium journalist, mentor, global citizen, and world's best boss, Linda Solomon. The world that I grew up in. When I was five years old, I was living in Chattanooga, Tennessee. That's about 75 miles from where the Ku Klux Klan was also born. I heard a lot around the dinner table about equal rights and civil rights. The burning question at that time, and that I saw my parents struggling with and all their friends struggling with, was what can we do? What can we do about the problems in the world? And the problems were pretty bad, but they were working really hard to try to do something about them. And even though it was violent and even though it was really scary, they didn't back down. I got a job right out of university for a newspaper in Nashville, Tennessee called The Tennessean. And I had a lot of opportunity there. And my boss pretty quickly sent me out to the poorest neighborhoods in the city. My job was to uncover um, exploitation of the poor. I started to uncover one story after another of injustice and pretty soon I saw that you could just do that endlessly. Sometime later, I was still asking that question, but I had a chance to do a story in Kenya. I had a chance to go to Nairobi and to interview an environmentalist there named Wangari Mathai. When I met her, she was trying to protect the central park in the city. The president wanted to pave the park. She was doing everything she possibly could to stop this. She was thrown in jail, she was beaten up. Despite that fact, she just had an incredible spirit and eventually she did stop it. Wangari became the first African woman ever to win a Nobel Peace Prize, also the first environmentalist to ever win a Peace Prize. She really inspired me and I went to look for other people who were of her caliber. One of them was a guy named Baba Amte. He had a medical degree, but instead of following the path that he was brought up to do, he decided to go work with untouchables, with lepers, and he created a leper colony, and he went on to do many other great things, and meeting him was really inspiring too. They had showed me that even in really dire circumstances, there's always something you can do. To think that there's nothing you can do is really to rob yourself of power. What are you guys going to do? We live in a world now where you can make so much change so quickly. You, if you want to make something happen, you have power that we just didn't have. And what are you going to do with your voice in this world? It's never been so easy to make a difference and to make a difference so quickly. And my way of making a difference has been through the Vancouver Observer where I'm able to give myself a voice and hundreds of other people a voice a voice that connects them with the larger world. What can one person do? They can do a lot. Thanks. Mm -hmm.